throughout Asia, the race is on to lead not just the region, but the world in the blockchain and digital currency space. And Charles Dosi has been keeping a close eye on all of it. He's Asia Pacific Managing Director at Consensus, which is the enterprise arm that drives Ethereum use in the industry. His role is to help businesses and governments think about how to use blockchain. Dosi says it's a race indeed, just not a sprint. It's a marathon and there is many different topics of CBDC. So we've seen through the COVID, uh, Asia being uh, hit first, but also recovering really fast. And we see on many other topics, uh, such as CBDCs, uh, Asia leading the way and, and building uh, really the next generation of digital societies with, with CBDCs. China may have been first out of the gate, but the rest of Asia is scrambling to keep up. In Japan, phase one of a proof of concept program for a central bank backed digital currency, or CBDC, is underway, even if the country has no plans to issue a CBDC just yet. Instead, it's a policy hedge, you know, just in case. In a March 2021 speech, Bank of Japan Governor Haruhiko Kuroda said, quote, Central banks share the view that it is not an appropriate policy response to start considering CBDC only when the need to issue CBDC arises in the future. In Hong Kong, the Monetary Authority is studying the idea of an e-Hong Kong dollar as part of its plans to future-proof the city. Elsewhere in the region, in places like Thailand, a public consultation period is underway for its retail CBDC project. If you look at Thailand, Thailand has been really working early on on getting the right regulations uh, for all their, uh, all their practitioners. So there is licenses available for ICOs, there is licenses for trading uh, digital assets, uh, and they keep exp experimenting and exploring, validating the technology, validating the use cases, uh, and also uh, embracing the technologies. In South Korea, Shinhan Bank, one of the oldest banks in the country, recently announced that it has developed a pilot of a blockchain-based CBDC platform. It's partnering with LG Corp, figuring out how retail consumers can use an electronic wand. All this ahead of a potential CBDC issued by the nation's central bank itself, the Bank of Korea. Singapore started well before in 2018. Two years later, the Monetary Authority of Singapore, or MAS, announced the conclusion of its multi-year, multi-phase project Ubin that explored the use of blockchain technology for clearing and settlement of payments and securities. And now MAS is partnering with the Bank of International Settlements Innovation Hub Center in Singapore and the central banking community on another wholesale CBDC project, Project Dunbar, to design, develop and test new multiple CBDC models for cross-border payments involving wholesale CBDCs. Governments are expanding their CBDC initiatives beyond national borders, and this is where things are going to get interesting. In my opinion, it's probably the most ambitious uh, POC in, uh, in terms of CBDC for 2021 uh, after China uh, retail CBDC. In February 2021, the central banks of China, Hong Kong, Thailand, and the United Arab Emirates announced that they were collaborating on a multiple CBDC bridge project for cross-border payments. It's the first time you see four different central banks working on building uh, a shared infrastructure to go cross-border. And usually, if you look at the history of experimentation of CBDCs, you've seen central banks mostly looking at their domestic market and, and experimenting for their domestic market. In the race that is CBDC, one thing is clear. China may already have one leg over the finish line well before others even cross the starting gate.